So, hi everybody, I'm Sean. I'm from a company called Axamem. We're based in Singapore. Um, we started out uh, in 2019 building on uh, new in-memory technologies and looking at what some of the, the changes in 3D analytics and other um, uh, components can do for uh, in new and interesting solutions. And overall, what we're trying to do is lower the, the, the barrier to entry to getting, in, getting started in 3D and digital twins. Uh, when we started, we actually were focused more on the data side of things, the data integration. And we're working with Intel. In fact, we're one or two startups globally that got access to an early technology called Intel Optane Persistent Memory. Uh, so this is a, a server that had three terabytes of persistent memory and 192 cores, and we're streaming in over 23 billion stock trades um, from Fortune 500 companies, and then using Unity to kind of visualize the, the front end uh, to see just how what performance they could drive, as well as what new interfaces or new experiences uh, we could give, give to users. Um, then in mid 2020, COVID hit, um, and so there was a pause and a bunch, uh, some activities. But then um, Singapore's largest hospital got in contact um, to ask what we could do to help with the um, in the COVID situation. Um, they had been managing um, some very large expo centres with 10,000 people um, um, inside them, but um, looking at 2D maps for tracking other infectious diseases like measles and and diarrhoea and so on. Um, but we wanted to translate that into 3D, so we had the, the full map of the hospital um, and could see, I guess, the spread of disease across multiple wards, both horizontally and vertically. Uh, so on the left-hand side here, we actually, you can see the, the digital twin map that we built in Unity. Uh, this is 2,000 beds, 400 rooms across five blocks of the hospital, um, and all the beds and wards in the right locations, but different varying levels of detail on each floor, depending on uh, basically the time we had, as well as the uh, the focus in, in where they, they thought there was potential issues. Um, the difference, though, on the right-hand side was using our data engine, and we, we went from basically a server down to a little Intel NUC um, to be able to run this, but we imported um, months of, uh, of patient movement data, lab results data that was all anonymized by the patient team, um, but then we were able to use a time slider to move backwards and forwards in time across that historical data set, uh, so the team could actually focus and see um, where disease was was spreading and where it was starting from. So on the right-hand side, this case was actually um, early in COVID. There was a doctor that went back to um, Thailand. They'd been working in the hospital. Uh, she'd been working one of the wards. When she got back, um, they, she tested positive. Uh, and so we're able to tag all the patients in the wards. You can kind of see here um, that were there at that period of time. Um, and then using the algorithm, actually follow them around the hospital. And we used a risk-based algorithm to trace 44 primary and then 162 secondary contacts. Um, but it wasn't just the fact they came in contact, we could now take into account the amount of time they actually spent in the same room, as well as the physical distance based on beds. So two beds, for example, on the opposite side of the room um, has got lower risk than actually two beds close to each other. Um, so that's what got, got us started. Um, just to show what some of those things look like, um, um, where this is at. Um, so this is the uh, one of the hospital models we use for development and testing. We, we can obviously use the patient data and the, the actual hospital model uh, during demonstrations and for development and testing. Uh, but this is basically the user interface that the, the hospital, the infectious diseases team sees, except, except the model is actually the, the, the hospital they're working with. This is a 1500 bed hospital that we use for, for dev and testing, as well as providing this as a starting point for organizations that want to get started on digital twins to see how we've built this. Um, quite low poly, this actually was designed to run on a hospital laptop, which are not known for their GPU capabilities. Um, so we had to make it low poly, um, low performance, uh, sorry, high performance, low poly. Um, but the, the big difference is you know, we can we can go through levels of detail and transparency and things, but where we uh, were focused was being able to bring in data sets. So these are data sets, um, for example, for CPCRE, for disease X. Um, ARI is the respiratory, in, um, and for their case, they had COVID data. All the data you see here today is simulated, but for their case, they're actually using, uh, obviously, the, the, the anonymized data from the hospital. Uh, so if we open up something like disease X cases, it brings up a dashboard showing a point in time, and then on the hospital model, it actually changed as well, and you actually see the patients um, on the beds at a particular point in time. Um, then if we come back and move this slider back across the historical time series, then in real time, well, uh, in, in quite fast period of time, the, the patients actually move to the right locations and the bed colouring shows the, the risk um, or the incidence of the disease, depending on which, back, which data set they're actually chosen. Uh, so this allows them then to move backwards and forwards in steps of a day or even hours, depending on the data they've loaded. Uh, and this has been a quite, a, quite, a, a, quite a big game changer for the way they actually track historical disease. 
Our next step is actually to integrate this into real time into the hospital systems um, so that we actually get this alerting in real time and we're continuously tracking uh, the spread of disease across the hospital. Um, so that's um, one aspect of, I guess, the, the, the model that we've been working with. Um, in terms of data connection, we've been using um, the, the data from data warehouse, patient movements, lab results data and things to be able to bring this all together uh, and create this kind of real time interface that allows them to see and, and track that disease. Um, once you've actually built the, the simulation, this actually actually shows um, there's other use cases we're now investigating, for example, for um, routing simulation. Um, so this is the same model you saw before, but instead we've actually got about 400 um, actors in here that are all individually routing themselves and finding their way across the hospital. Um, and over time you start seeing congestion here. So you can change parameters in the model and how many people you put in. You can actually add in, for example, real time obstacles and see what happens with that, or you can you know, disable lift or disable stairs and then see what could happen. So what you saw in the moment ago was kind of the historical, but using these routing engines that we can also um, look forward in time um, and, and predict forward based on different scenarios or different inputs to see what might happen in the twin um, given a certain set of parameters. Um, so that's that. Um, we are doing some early work, so it's interesting, um, Arva talking about the, the work going on they're doing with um, sensing. Um, so the hospital is also is interested in, in how we deploy sensors like this that have, um, this is based on a Raspberry Pi, it's got an inbuilt 4G radio, so completely independent, but it's got air temperature, pressure, humidity, a VOC, so the volatile organic compounds, again that sick building syndrome, as well as a PM10, PM2.5 sensor. Um, and this data basically gets fed back into the model um, through either mapping it into the um, into the hospital location, but in this case, this is actually a field test. And so you can go in there and see the real time humidity, temperature, sensing, and the next stage is actually, the, yeah, as you said, putting the, the real time alerts in um, based on multi-variable parameters. So not just one sensor, but humidity is high, temperature is high in certain locations. Um, so all that data gets fed in, it can be visualized or exported, but also then used in algorithms going forward. Um, all the models you see as well, um, we support um, being out of multi-device. So we can, so, um, anywhere you can see some ground, we can put in characters um, and then switch to VR mode. And so if you're in HoloLens or if you're in um, a, a Oculus headset, you can also then move through the model, actually see and see the data that's moved in. We're also supporting multiplayer so that if you have multiple users looking at the same scene, they'll all see that same configuration. I go into one of the rooms here, for example, I see those cubes on the bed that represent the patients as well. Um, and so we're moving towards, I guess, not so much metaverse yet, but that social aspect of digital twins as well. Uh, so some of the, um, just to cover off, I guess, some of the, the practicalities that we saw during the, the project. Um, security is obviously one of the key considerations, uh, or one of the, the, consider, the consideration when you're building these kind of twins. Um, Start, starting small though um, is what we're focused on. So we started very small on a, a, a disconnected proc of one level, then build up to multiple levels that allowed us to then get buy-in from different stakeholders to the point now where we can go forward on a, a much more integrated scale, rather than starting off on a very big project um, and trying to get funding for that. Um, fidelity doesn't need to be high fidelity. Um, for our use case, we're actually just using, we've got 2D CAD maps, we layered them with two, 3D objects on top. They gave enough fidelity for the digital twin, for the infectious diseases team to understand the layouts of the rooms and how that could impact disease flow. Uh, but it also meant we could stay low poly. We can run this on the HoloLens or we can run this on, on different tablets, for example. As I said, no existing 3D content's okay. Empty space is important to be able to take it away. Um, but also we found one of the interesting things we found was empty space can also be a risk. If there's an area of the hospital that's sensitive, you can't leave it empty because it draws attention to it. So in some places we're actually putting in content so it didn't draw attention to a space in the hospital that otherwise people might walk by and, and, and see what's there. Um, simple real time may be easier to actually implement than historical um, uh, real time uh, and doing complex AI on a large amount of historical data. And the last thing is aim to close the loop. So it's good getting data into the twin and visualizing, but how do you make a decision and push something out to actually have an, have an impact? So in our case, for example, we want to close the loop. But if we detect disease in a certain um, population, can we actually order the swabs for those patients before the humans actually see what's going on so that by the time the people come in in the morning, they've already got the results back from that first swabbing, which then gets them you know, eight, potentially eight to 12 hours jumpstart on, on an infection. 
Um, I won't start here, but we are looking for partners to implement this in, in different locations. If you do want to get in contact and go through John um, or one of the team here and they'll put us in contact. But uh, thanks very much for the opportunity to present. Um, thank you.